What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I've got six very specific fragrances this time around. These are some of the more obscure fragrances in my collection that some of you have heard of. Some of you have tried and you're going to be really excited, I would think, that I'm discussing these fragrances and shining a little light on them. Some of these are indie, some of these are designer, some of these are niche. But the majority of people either A, have never given this a look and given it a try, maybe never heard of these particular fragrances from these brands, or just it's news to them and they had no idea that they were as good as they actually are. So these are six fragrances that are out there that are pretty easy to get, that aren't super expensive, that are much better than you ever thought they would be because you may have never heard of them. So let's talk about them, stay tuned. We're going to start with an indie niche brand that's been making a lot of noise in the online community, especially over on Instagram. It's Day 3 Fragrances, and my favorite offering from the house is easily Bani. So Bani is a mango and papaya scent profile. I actually wore this on one of my beach days this summer, because uh, for those of you who don't know, I live in a beach town in the panhandle of Florida now, and this screams, screams beach vibe. Juicy, sweet very fresh and watery, such a tropical vibe to this. A little spiced, but not a whole lot. Very green mango type of feel, papaya seeds, all that stuff going on here in this fragrance. Beautifully tropical, juicy, happy fragrance. Great performance. It's an eau de parfum that gives like extra de parfum type of longevity for being a fresh, fruity, tropical type of scent profile. This is my favorite from the house. He's got a lovely coffee fragrance, an amber heavy fragrance. There's an iris fragrance called Say Less that a lot of people have been enjoying. There's some great offerings. I strongly suggest sampling the house. But for those of you that never heard of Deep Day 3 fragrances, you need to do yourself a favor and try this one. If you vibe with a similar taste to mine, or you just value my opinion and you're looking to check out something new, try Bani, especially if you like mango scents or just tropical fruit scents that are different from all the rest in the first place, you're gonna to wanna to check this one out. Again, that's Day 3 Fragrances, Bani. Here's one that is super polarizing. Admittedly, my wife doesn't hate it, but definitely doesn't love it. She's not a fan. Um, I bought this from my dear friend Hillary. Shout out to Hills if you happen to see this. Uh, she was doing some spring cleaning, as she called it, and she gave us a list in our group chat of fragrances she wanted to get rid of. I had a decant of this a few years ago, and I was like, one day I need to get that bottle. And the opportunity came around, thanks to Hills, for me to get a great price on Oud Black Candy from Mancera. I've had this for a little while now, and we're starting to move into the the type of weather where I can wear it. I've been spraying it on my arm the last several nights. That's why we're talking about it. This is the fragrance that made me think about this in the first place. It is a powdery li black licorice fragrance. Ambery, a little woodsy, very sweet candy-like fragrance, but black licorice. If you look on, I think Fragrantica has sweet notes listed and you don't see that on other spots. Uh, it may or may not be there, but the dominant thing here is a black licorice. And not just Twizzlers, like think traditional black licorice, which is polarizing. Some people can't stand licorice. But it also gets very powdery at the same time. Like it might be tonka bean or vanilla. I don't remember the note breakdown, but this is not fair. The opening can be a little challenging if you're not used to the, like a dense licorice smell. Because it's believable. And it's even powdery sniffing it out the atomizer. So it's not for everyone. It's a dark candy powder fragrance with a little bit of woods that's warm. Is the most simple way I can explain it. Great performance. This is not going to be for everyone, but damn, if you can give this one a chance, it's different. I have nothing else that smells like this. I got around 1,500 fragrances. I've smelled thousands. I've never smelled another profile that smells like this. It's so authentic to traditional black licorice candy, plus a deep powdery nuance. Like I said, it's not a skin chemistry thing. It's literally, even sniffing it out the atomizer, I get the powder. This is unique, but I think it's phenomenal. Definitely sample first. Nothing blind by safe about this fragrance in any way, shape, or form. No, 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 no. But it's a testament to the, the kind of risks with perfumes that Pierre Montal will take, because there's so much that comes out with Mancera. You never know what to even try, right? But get a sample of this one. Get a decant somewhere, somehow, some way, and try this one, especially if you know you like licorice. Go into it with that mindset. If you don't like licorice, 
It's a bomb of it. You won't like it, but it's better than you think. Again, that's Mancera. Ooh, black candy. Now, this is another one of those fragrances that makes me believe that Jacques Foth has never made an even very good fragrance. Like everything I've tried, I have five or six different bottles from them now that I've, I've blindly gotten, each one of them. And I think the most standout-ish scent profile is Velours Boisse. This is one I like to recommend people when they want something different for the evenings to really show out special events because this has a similar vibe and tone to Bentley for Men Intense, but on a much superior level. It doesn't have a booze and leather in the notes, if I remember correctly, but it smells like that. Very leathery, woodsy, spiced. Very spiced, dense, super masculine, top-tier quality. A mate, best magnetic caps in the game. I'm sorry, Jacques Foth has, I've never seen better, listen to that sound, that's a strong ass magnet guys, and it's all the bottles, but this is, this is special, and I have like 66 bucks from Fragrance Buy or something like that for 100 ml, under the radar, underappreciated niche is Jacques Foth, yeah, Green Water is an, a classic from them, Carrasso Bay got hype for a few years, because it's a phenomenal Tropical sunscreen S type of fragrance. I have those. Yeah, they're they're beautiful. Verlasu underrated Tempty Autumn recently got that Bellam. There's a lot of great offerings, guys. Is the point, but this might be the best one for me to recommend of the bunch because it takes what's a cheap hype beast and evolves it and makes it better. This may have even came out before, but that's what it reminds me of. That's why I bring up Bentley Intense. This is so far superior to that fragrance. It's unreal. It dwarfs Bentley for Men Intense to me because of the level of quality, the smoothness of the blend, while maintaining that uber-masculine, rough-and-rugged feel. It's an amazing fragrance. Great performer, too. Just, it's better than you might have thought. Jacques Foth, Valores Boisset. This next one, I've done a full review here on the channel, and it, it doesn't get any love. Outside of me, I don't think it really does. Uh, and it's pretty unique for what it is. It's from my favorite car company, let alone my favorite car company, Fragrances. It's Mercedes-Benz. It's Mercedes-Benz Man Gray. Ambery, smoky, spiced, and woodsy. This is a great everyday scent for someone that doesn't smell like all the other mass-appealing everyday fragrances that you see from car companies and designer fragrances. This is such a good one, guys. Good performer. Not a beast by any means, but above average. You get some pretty good projection for about an hour, half, two hours. Decent sillage, nothing crazy strong. Great longevity. I get roughly eight hours out of this one. It's a really good fragrance. It can be found pretty easily from discounters. Most places that have the Mercedes fragrances, they more than likely have this one. You get it around 30 some odd, 40 bucks, depending on bottle size. It's just a good fragrance. It doesn't smell too synthetic. There's a little bit of Embrox in here. You will smell it, but it's not like that synthetic blue shower gel type of smell. It just gives it a little bit of added freshness to an overall warm, ambery, and smoky type of scent profile. It kind of gives some balance and freshens it up. Just really good stuff that I can assure you is definitely better than you may have ever thought it was, giving it a glance. That's Mercedes-Benz Man Gray. Now here's one that I've done a full review on that for a while it went away. Couldn't find it. Now it's really cheap. Fragrance buy it for like 32, 34, 36 bucks, something like that. It's a monster. And it's for you iris lovers. It barely smells like the original. Thank God. Because I don't like the original. We're talking you own. I just it's just not for me. I apologize for any of you that love that, and that's your all-time favorite. To each their own. It's just not for me. I don't hate it. I just don't really like it that much. But you own Le Parfum? Oh, man, this is the best version. Yeah, I have Upalm Ice. I have Absolute. I have the Eau de Parfum now. Um, I don't have all of them, but I've tried a bunch of them. I got, I got several. This blows them away. So there's like a praline gourmand sweetness with an iris that comes across earthy, violet -y type of smell. And then you get a, a drastic transition while still being sweet and floral. It's a different sweet and floral. You go from praline gourmand and earthy powdery to smooth, creamy vanilla soft powdery iris smell. I get transitions from earthy, earthy slightly powdery to smooth soft powder. Delicious like candy, almost chocolate-like, dessert-like sweetness to creamy vanilla, which is very distinctive. And it's a monster. This stuff is such a strong performer. Easy on the sprays, it's big sprays too. 
God, that smells so good. But the sweetness is a little, at least early on, is a little reminiscent of the sweetness of Yoop Ohm, the original. But this isn't as chemically synthetic. Sure, it's synthetic, but not the chemical synthetic mess that the original is. God, this smells so good. I smell it floating in the air. This is a must try for any of you iris lovers or sweet fragrance lovers or those that like the Yoop Ohm line as a whole. In my opinion, the best one they've ever made. I haven't tried them all. Like I said, I've tried a bunch of them. But this is far and wide the superior version, the superior form of Yoop Ohm to me personally that I can assure you is better than you may have ever thought Yoop Ohm Le Parfum. Last but not least, any of you amber lovers, okay? This is a benzoin note that's very, very sticky. It's like glue. It's like spraying glue on you. That may not sound attractive, but hear me out. There's a Divana sweetness. There's an earthy green tone. There's some woodiness to it. But it's mainly based around this sticky benzoin amber accord. It's Maison Crivelli Ombre Chromatique. Be prepared for crazy longevity. This one's sticking with you, literally sticking with you, until you decide it needs to get off of your skin. It's like spraying glue. It's that kind of, the benzo, it's, I attribute it to the benzoin. It's based around this particular benzoin note that the perfumer used, and it's such a sticky, resinous, ambery smell. It's so good. It has become, since I got it, probably my favorite amber dominant fragrance, like my favorite benzoin note, because it's not crazy unique, but it's also more of an earthy, resinous smell than it even gets credit for. Because that Divana note gives it this distinctive sweetness that's not your typical like vanillas and stuff like that. Uh, Divana's been getting used more and more, I find. Even in designer fragrances, I, the One Million line, they've been using that in the last couple of flankers here and there. This is a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Admittedly, it's the only one I've tried from the house. I know they're, they're a revered house, but I don't really see anything about this one. This was a release from 2022. Um, it's kind of a winter-only scent for me because it's such a heavy, thick, sticky, glue-like type of wear for me. Uh, but if you like ambery, heavy scents, if you're a Benzoin fan, quality Benzoin fragrance, you have been missing out. This is a must-try if you're into that style. It is phenomenal. And like I said, it's probably, if I really sit here and think about it, my favorite Benzoin fragrance. Ombre Chromatique from Maison Crivelli. Well, that's the six. I could have made seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 15. I could have compiled it to make a longer video with more options, but I really wanted to keep it a very intimate collection of ones that I know don't get much love outside of me. And I personally feel like they deserve a little bit more spotlight for you guys. Get your nose on them, try them out, see if they're for you. Might be some collection gold, some extremely amazing olfactive experiences for you guys. It's very unique compared to what you're used to. If you typically go after designers in more mass-marketed niche, here's some stuff that you can look at that's going to kind of set you apart a bit more from your average fragrance lovers with a variety of price points, too. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, because I do appreciate all the feedback, and I love hearing from you guys. Of these six, what have any of you tried? What do you have experience with? I'm, I'm not sitting here saying like everybody that watches this video hasn't tried any of these fragrances, but for the most part, they're the under the radar type where they don't really get a lot of love and, you know, not that easy to sample for some of them, but they're actually really, really good. At least in my opinion, they are. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of these six that I featured here today and you give them a spray now, you might end up thanking me later. Have a good one, guys.